Welcome back, folks. I'm Frizz, and in lieu of the whole debacle going on with the OGL, Wizards of the Coast, and Hasbro, I'd like to take some time to talk about an opinion that I've seen people share a lot online that I don't agree with, and I think that it's probably a little bit weird to see or incorrect when we give an incorrect impression to someone who's new to Pathfinder 2e. And basically, a lot of people online think that martial characters are actually stronger than spellcasters in 2e, and that spellcasters are best served tossing out debuffs and buffs, and that's it. Now, if you're remotely aware of online discussion of TTRPG mechanics, which I'm guessing that you are since that's what this channel is, you've probably heard the term linear fighters and quadratic wizards before. Historically speaking, martial characters got around the same level of power increase with each level that they gained, while spellcasters start off with small increases and rapidly get huge increases at later levels. This is absolutely the case in Pathfinder 1e and D&D 5e, though I don't really know how much it actually comes up when people are, you know, sitting down at, at, at a table playing, because like, how often do you actually play an adventure after level 13 anyway? But Pathfinder 2e does change a lot of things, both by boosting the power of martial characters and by imposing some limitations onto spellcasters. This does lead to spellcasters not being as insanely dominant as in previous editions, but it doesn't mean that spellcasting is bad or anything like it. Rather, I think that spellcasters just now have to specialize, rather than just being able to be good at everything. Before we get into that whole specialization business though, we should probably talk about how spellcasters have been limited and why those changes were made, since you know there are probably some new people around here that have just recently come over from 5e. Well, basically, to have a big impact on any kind of combat scenario, most spellcasters are going to have to use some of their highest level spell slots. If you're level 11, you can't just expect that casting a third level fireball spell will have remotely the same level of impact that it had back when you learned third level fireball at level 5. If you want fireball to have the same level of impact as when you first got it, you're going to have to use up one of your highest or your highest level spell slots. Enemy HP increases really quickly in 2e, and if you aren't using higher level spells, then blasting spells are going to fall off just because they don't keep up with how fast enemy HP increases. Another way that the game encourages spellcasters to use up their high level spell slots over their low level ones is the incapacitation trait. It doesn't show up on every spell, and honestly, it's not on a lot of spells. But some spells, like say sleep, are really strong since they can just knock someone out just based on the results of a single roll. So Paizo added the incapacitation trait to the system. It's on spells like sleep and charm that can just end an encounter in a single die roll. Now enemies who are double or higher the level of a spell get one degree of success better on their saving throw. Basically, if they would fail, they're bumped up to a success. Basically, you won't be able to cast a level 1 charm spell on a level 15 NPC and expect that it's going to be an effective strategy. While it might not have had a super high chance of success before, now it is really not effective, which is good because it means that level 1 spells aren't going to be winning entire encounters anymore. You're going to have to use a high level spell slot when you actually want a high level effect now. This sounds like it might be a bad thing for spellcasters, but it just means that spellcasters are going to have to specialize in particular types of magic now. Whereas before, they could potentially trivialize entire situations by preparing the right spell, now they actually have to choose what spells they really want to be good at. You can't just prepare a couple of third level fireballs and then just assume you're going to be good enough at AoE for the entire adventuring day. If you really want good AoE damage, you're going to have to commit your higher level spell slots to those. Another important aspect when it comes to specialization is that all spellcasters aren't just defined by their spell choices anymore. All classes in 2e get a ton of different class feats, and those can't be changed every day like a prepared spellcaster's spell slots. So yes, your abjuration wizard absolutely can decide to prepare a lot of evocation spells for a day just, you know, to get a bunch of AoE rather than focusing on protection. But that doesn't mean that all of those evocation spells are going to be highly effective or anything. They're not going to have the class feats to capitalize on them most likely, and just swapping around your spells doesn't mean that you're going to all of a sudden be able to do 
any role. You can't just grab some spells and expect to do things as good as someone who already specializes in doing it. You've got to pick something and be good at it. So in general, in 2e, spellcasters have to pick a type of spell or a playstyle that they want to focus on, and then really focus on it, rather than picking whatever spell they want for whichever role they want to be good at for the day. Funnily enough, that's, uh, that's what martial characters have had to be doing for a while now. But don't let what I've been saying make you think that spellcasters are bad or anything. In fact, I think that they're actually a lot of fun. While they most likely won't be doing as good or better single target damage as like any martial character without sacrificing a hell of a lot, spellcasters can fill basically any role in the party. No martial character is going to be doing better AoE damage than a spellcaster, and having someone who's good at AoE can make a huge difference in a fight. Seriously, I've had entire encounters be ended in like one or two turns because of a good placed chain lightning or fireball or holy cascade. Spells at the right moments are insanely impactful. It's just the right moment is no longer every moment. One thing that everyone likes to talk about online though is buffing and debuffing. In fact, there are some people that think that buffing and debuffing is what every spellcaster should do rather than focusing on, you know, doing other stuff with their spells. To be fair, buffing and debuffing is really impactful in 2e, and the one good thing that is about it is a plus one is always going to be good, so if you have a spell that grants a plus one bonus that's level one, like bless, it's still going to be a pretty useful spell if you're like level 15. It scales with your level incredibly well. Honestly, I think that everyone who plays 2e ends up at some point having this like light bulb moment where they realize how good a plus one is and spellcasters are almost certainly the best at the game at giving out those small boosts and penalties this doesn't mean that that is all that a spellcaster should do though or what all spellcasters should be doing not remotely yes you can not make a master of magic anymore that has an effective solution for literally everything that you run across but you can still make a highly effective specialist. There are tons of stuff that I'd like to talk about regarding spellcasters in 2e, like how they can benefit massively from the degrees of success system and focus points, but I've only got so much time here, and only so much time to actually make this video. Ultimately, spellcasters are in a great spot in 2e, and I don't think that the balance between spellcasters and martial characters has ever been better in a TTRPG. Thanks for watching. If anyone's coming over from 5e, then welcome, it's wonderful to have you here. I know that Pathfinder 2e can be a bit much starting off, I know it was for me, even though I came from Pathfinder 1e, which is even more of a bit much, but I really do give my word that it's worth it if you take the time. Just put in a bit of effort, 95% of 5e carries over because ultimately you're still just rolling dice, adding numbers, pretending to be a fantasy action hero, and failing to open a door for 15 minutes because you're scared of the door. You know, standard TTRPG stuff. All of the rules for 2e are online on Archives of Nethys, and that's an amazing resource. It's pretty good. Check it out. Also, Pathbuilder 2e and Wanderer's Guide are both wonderful free tools for helping with character creation. I can say that the, uh, Pathbuilder 2e Android app is what I use almost all of the time, but the web browser version is also really good, and Wander's Guide is really good. Links to Archives of Nethys, Pathbuilder 2e, and Wander's Guide are going to be down in the description. Check them out. With that out of the way, what do you guys think about spellcasters and 2e, and honestly, I'm curious, how many of you are coming over just recently or in the past couple of months from D&D 5e? I'm just curious. Let me know in a comment down below, and subscribe when you're down there, or something, I guess. Regardless, until I see you next, live a wonderful life.